Pelosi was, as always, recently berated on Fox News. This time it was in the context of the panel over at the Five going on this weird, bizarre rant about AOC and Matt Gates getting married. But there's a twist to this story because Matt Gates, of all people, jumps in to defend Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Now, before we get to that, I do think it's important to give you context, like why did this weird, bizarre conversation happen on the five in the first place? Well, it actually has to do with legislation that believe it or not, Gates and Ocasio-Cortez are working on together having to do with you know, members of Congress trading individual stocks, something that I care deeply about. So the reason that Matt Gates and AOC have been in the news together lately is because they have teamed up to try to pass this legislation that would put an end to insider trading within the House of Representatives or Congress actually in general. Now the bipartisan restoring faith in government act would prevent all members of Congress, so in the House and the Senate, as well as their spouses and dependents from owning stocks or making trades, so individual stocks, of course. So any violations of the bill could result in a fine at the court's discretion up to $50,000. And just seeing how the courts usually work out here in the United States in response to people in positions of power, they probably will not get a $50,000 fine. But nonetheless, there is an enforcement mechanism in this legislation, which is great. Now, it surprised all of us to see Matt Gates and AOC team up. But I wanna be clear about something, I personally have no problem with members of Congress from both sides of the aisle coming together to pass legislation that we desperately need. And in this case, rooting out some of the corruption within Congress by preventing them from trading individual stocks would be fantastic. Now with that said, let's get to the five and their weird fan fiction fantasies. I smell a romantic comedy, Oh, oh. a beautiful left wing communist in Congress. A dashing right wing male fresh off a wrongful accusation of sexual misconduct. They come together to to fight one of the most corrupt practices in politics and they fall in love. They can't help themselves. She's got a French poodle, he's got a strange hairline, but somehow they're gonna make it work. And then they're gonna leave politics and start their own business. It'll be like a bakery, a bakery, a vegan bakery, a <laughs> vegan bakery for pets. He's happily a married. A vegan bakery, no, he's gonna leave her. <laughs> no, he's, he's not, Ginger's he's married. He's married. He's married. He's married. He's married. And don't she, ruin she, this. In this story, can I marry them? <laughs> yes, you will be married. <laughs> what was that? What like was that? Strokes come in a lot of different forms. The warning signs can be subtle. Sometimes they're more explicit. <laughs> I just, okay, obviously we're gonna jump into the substance if there is any in yeah, a moment, yeah. but. We're gonna break our legs on the bottom of where the substance should be, but. <laughs> I gotta say, like, there's a lot to criticize Matt Gates on. His hairline isn't one of those things. And it's well, rich coming from a guy who increasingly looks like Gollum as he ages. But nonetheless, hey. John. Gollum was a tragic figure, he as was, you well just know. Like, just like Greg Gutfeld. Uh, so what was interesting about that is one would expect that if Greg Gutfeld is gonna go off for this like long extended fantasy that he's spinning or whatever with AOC and Matt Gates, he's gonna be focusing on AOC. And he did talk about AOC. But he said Matt Gates's hairline is weird. He mentioned the fact that he suffered these accusations of sexual misconduct. I feel like this entire thing was less about creating this masturbatory fantasy about AOC and more about just attacking Matt Gates. Yeah. He kept throwing him under the bus. There. I know. I know. I'm curious why that is. There must be something at play that we're not privy to. I just whatever. I don't get it. But what's also super interesting about this story, and honestly, something I would never expect, is that on his podcast, because that's a thing now, members of Congress have their own podcasts. Mm -hmm. Gates took it upon himself to call out Fox and defend AOC. It does seem a little childish to me that the media always has to over sexualize everything that AOC is involved with. They wouldn't do that to men and two people can engage in serious legislation that's not renaming some post office, but trying to make our mm -hmm. Congress mm -hmm. more honest and more ethical without that type of, I think, very childish and immature commentary. And then Judge Janine, Judge Janine, who starts out saying I am happily married. Judge Janine, who was sitting at my table at Mar-a-Lago the night I proposed to my wife by the end of the Greg Gutfeld rant, 
she's bailed and she's wanting to be the officiant for me and AOC. So shame on you, Judge Janine. So I'm curious what you think. I mean, I, I do commend him for calling out Gutfeld and Fox for, for their weird discussion. Uh, I, I commend him for defending AOC and also shedding light, something that I don't expect from most Republican lawmakers on how differently women are treated versus how men are treated. That mm -hmm. was great. Now, we're gonna look into Matt Gates's past because he's not really a great arbiter of decent treatment toward women. Um, We'll get to that in just a moment, but John, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm glad especially that he didn't just defend her, but he pointed out that Fox does this, that this is not just a single occurrence that someone is treating a female politician differently, but this is a standard. We're just, we expect to see this and that Fox especially does it and not just the men on Fox. The many of the women on Fox are active participants in this. They see some temporary gain, I guess. To making light of a popular Democratic lawmaker and either don't realize or don't care that they're playing into, um, you know, an unequal way that women are treated in politics. That's definitely true. Along the way, it's convenient for them that they sort of distract from the substance, mm -hmm. the actual yes, corruption. Exactly. Like Greg Uffield implied that he agrees with them, <laughs> but right. one wouldn't know that to watch from watching that segment. So far as I've seen, he's never gotten off on. You know, a long rant about this topic. They could use their popular show to continually say we need to get this done if they believe it. Um, so the entire thing was pretty gross. Honestly, though, as bad as that was, and it was bad, and I'm glad that he defended him. Um, it's not as bad as some of what they've done on Fox when it comes to AOC. Tucker Carlson yeah. was obsessed with her on a nightly basis. I remember he had a little nickname for her. He insisted on calling her Sandy for some. Weird reason that's best not thought about for too too long, considering his obsession with college and high school age girls. Ugh. It's been very clear. Um, yeah, just constantly talking about Ben Shapiro, obviously Matt Walsh and Charlie, Kerr, all of them are obsessed with her. Greg Gutfeld, I think, is relatively constrained. I think he's just you know he's got like an artist soul wanting to break free, and this is the weird form that it took. Dude, just write fan fiction. You know, you can post it online, you get good feedback. Yeah, it was a not was, about AOC, please. Yeah, it was a weird scenario that he like made up in his head and felt the need to share also, on national television. It's a French bulldog, not a French poodle. Oh, did he say French How do you poodle? Get those mixed up. They're I such totally different dogs. It. Both good dogs, but what, what's a French poodle? Isn't a it's a kind of poodle? Isn't a French poodle just a poodle? I don't, you're probably deeply offending someone right I'm now. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know. If it makes you feel any better, while my dog is mixed, um, he was a rescue after all. He's mostly mini poodle. Mm -hmm. But I think part mini deer, part mini poodle. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. One hundred percent. Okay. So uh, I do want to just quickly discuss Matt Gates's history. Yes, he did face a pretty serious DOJ investigation after being accused of paying an underage woman, girl, she was seventeen, to uh, travel across state lines to have sex with him. Apparently, that. Uh, Investigation was dropped, it didn't lead to any charges. Okay, let's just put that aside. I mean, well, because there were no charges, all the stuff that was revealed from the Venmo no longer bothers me, nor should it bother right. anyone. I mean, look, it's he's probably innocent, the stuff that was in those Venmo messages. Let's just say Gates is well connected, okay? Um, I don't know anything for sure, this is just my opinion, but his father was a well known lawmaker in Florida. I would not be surprised if some string pulling took place. Yeah, you're not saying that that did happen. You're just saying you wouldn't be surprised. I'm saying that I think it's very likely, but it's just my opinion. <laughs> so let's put that aside. The other thing I wanted to just mention, we do have evidence of him being incredibly terrible and disrespectful toward women, including pro-choice activists. So let's show you the receipts on that. Have you watched these pro-abortion, pro-murder rallies? The people are just disgusting. Like, why is it? That the women with the least likelihood of getting pregnant are the ones most worried about having abortions. Nobody wants to impregnate you if you look like a thumb. These people are odious on the inside and out. They're like 5'2", 350 pounds, and they're like, give me my abortions or I'll get up and march and protest. And I'm thinking, march? You look like you got ankles weaker than the legal reasoning behind Roe versus Wade. A few of them need to get up and march. They need to get up and march for like an hour a day, swing those arms, get the blood pumping, maybe mix in a salad. 
who knows, maybe he turned a new leaf, maybe. But that was not good. I, I completely, I, yeah, but I gave him some credit this morning, what is wrong with me? I completely forgot about that. I mean, that was so terrible. It was bad. Not let alone, I mean, you could also say uh, he's one of the most enthusiastic supporters of Donald Trump, a guy who has viciously sexualized and the way that he talks about women, women in politics, women anywhere. You mean the guy who was just found guilty of sexual, sexual exactly. battery in a civil case? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's, he defends AOC from Greg Gutfeld, but all of the other women, I guess, can defend themselves. He defends AOC from Greg Gutfeld when Greg Gutfeld is criticizing AOC and Matt Gates, and him. right? Yes. So I think that might have a lot to do with it. But aside from all of that, again, credit where credit is due. I like that he's working on this legislation. That is an upside. I like the fact that he defended AOC. That's another upside in, in this story. But when people tell you who they are, you should believe it. And I need to see consistent and persistent Behavior from Matt Gates demonstrating that what he said in defending AOC is something that he actually takes to heart. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.